out. My mother passed away when I was three years old in an unfortunate accident. Since then, my dad has had a long list of girlfriends and failed relationships. Even as a kid, I'd never seen him without a woman in the house. I had a nanny to look after me during the day while my dad was at work, and whenever he would come back, his girlfriend at the time would be with him. He cut ties with my mother's family after her passing because he didn't see the point of keeping in touch with them. I assumed they didn't want a reminder of the tragedy, so they didn't claim custody to be able to visit me either. Growing up, it was just me and my dad, but he never seemed very interested in being a father to me. He mostly spent his time either working or hanging out with his girlfriend, whoever it happened to be at the time. I tried really hard to get along with him as a kid, but I never received any love and affection from him. He just did the bare minimum for me, so I gradually learned to expect nothing at all. That was my childhood, lonely and kind of sad. But thankfully, I still had my grandfather to keep me company. Unfortunately, he couldn't take me in because my father didn't want to give up custody. Sometimes he'd visit me, and at other times I'd go to him. But my father made sure very carefully that I didn't end up spending more than maybe three or four days at his place. My visits to my grandfather were regulated by my dad, and I still don't know why he was so finicky about it. I don't know why my father wasn't willing to give up custody, even though he treated me coldly. As I got older, I began to ribble because I wanted to spend more time at my grandfather's place. Obviously, it was because my grandfather showed me more love and affection and actually seemed to care about me beyond just the basics. But my father wasn't willing to let me, and even when I brought up how my grandfather treated me infinitely better than he did, my father would still say that at the end of the day he's my dad and whatever he says goes. My grandfather tried to get my dad to treat me like his own kid several times. But nothing ever changed, nor did he let me move out and live with my grandpa. So even in my teens, I had to continue living with my father. That was pretty much the worst phase of our relationship, and things only got worse after he met my current stepmother, Veronica. Veronica used to be our neighbor's niece, who'd been living with our neighbor until her company was able to provide her with proper accommodation. But then she and my dad started going out, and they got married about a year ago after almost eight months of dating. My dad seemed to dislike having me around, but never did anything about it until Veronica came around, and then the both of them turned pretty vicious towards me. Veronica had it in for me ever since the first day, and I had no idea why. It's not like I'd done anything to her, and in fact, I'd always tried to be very nice to her. But she hated my guts. I guess it had something to do with the fact that I was my dad's son from his previous marriage, and she couldn't stand the fact that I was still around because you know that was just a reminder that my dad had been married before or something. But that's just my theory of why she hated me so much. Maybe she just didn't need a reason to hate me, and that's the kind of person that she was. I don't know. The bottom line was that she hated me, period, and my life got a lot worse after she started dating my father. She'd make it a point to be as horrible to me as she possibly could whenever we were in the same room. She practically treated me like a housekeeper or something and would make me do all the chores, even though we had a maid, and my dad never said a word against it. I felt like Cinderella in my own house. Once she moved in, she not only made my dad stop giving me money for going out with my friends, but she also convinced him that I was old enough to get a part-time job and make my own money. So I had to get a job after that which was a much easier alternative than begging my dad to treat me like a human being. It was horrible because Veronica seemed bent on making my life a nightmare at my father's house, and I couldn't wait for the day that I could finally go away to college and move out of this place. I did tell my grandfather about the way I was being treated after Veronica moved in, and he told me that he'd talk to my father about it and do something. But things never changed, and after a while, I just gave up hope that maybe my grandfather would be able to make things better for me. I would vent to him, and he'd listen to me patiently, but that's all that happened, and things never changed. After a while, I just accepted that I had to deal with my dad and Veronica until I was able to afford to move out of this place. Then, about a week ago on my birthday, 
I was planning on going out with my friends and celebrating my 18th by buying a couple of beers and having a fun night. I've been saving up money for a while so I could splurge. But then my dad and Veronica decided that they had terrible news to give me, just so they could ruin my birthday. On the morning of my birthday, they told me that I needed to leave the house and find another place to stay. They told me that they were evicting me since Veronica had found out a couple of weeks ago that she was pregnant, and they wanted to use my room as a nursery for the new baby. My dad told me that they had come to this conclusion after a lot of thought, and they would rather that I did not beg or act all prophetic, so they'd reconsider because that would just ruin their happy mojo. Veronica told me that since I was an adult now, I needed to look out for myself, and this could be the start of something great. She tried her best to sound concerned and hopeful, but all I heard was a conniving snake trying to get me kicked out of my house. I tried to tone down the panic that I was feeling and decided to be rational with them, because I knew that crying, kicking, and screaming weren't going to get me anywhere with these people. They had no sympathy for me, so I told them that legally they couldn't evict me without notice and that they needed to wait for a couple of months until I was able to find a place for myself. I honestly had no idea what I was talking about, but I'm pretty sure that a law like that exists. My dad didn't fall for it though and told me that he had everything worked out with his lawyer already and he highly doubted that I had enough money or resources to come after them legally anyway, which he was right about. I didn't have either of those. So I suggested that I could pay rent for as long as I would live with them. And Veronica shot that down instantly by telling me that rent was not the problem and that she just didn't want unnecessary people to deal with when she was pregnant. So I needed to vacate the house anyway, just so she could have a peaceful pregnancy. I was grasping for straws, but I still made a last attempt and asked my dad if it would be okay if I moved to the basement or something because I was pretty desperate. And my dad still said no. He worked in a bank and made a decent income, so much so that Veronica had actually quit her job to be a stay-at-home wife, so I knew that money was not the problem. After some bickering, I realized I couldn't change their minds and they wanted me out at any cost. Now that I was an adult, they could kick me out without any legal repercussions, and I couldn't even do anything about it. So, I accepted defeat and went up to my room to pack my things and leave. I had no idea if my grandfather would be able to take me in or not. One of the major reasons that I hadn't moved in with him against my dad's orders was because he wasn't very financially stable. He'd been a high school science teacher, but was now retired. He had an unfortunate gambling addiction when my dad was in his 20s, which really messed up his savings, and he relied on my father heavily. He could barely even support himself. So, I had no idea how he'd be able to support me as well, and that's why I hadn't moved in with him earlier. But now I had no other choice. To be fair, it wasn't like my grandfather was starving or something. He lived modestly, and I could get used to it but I didn't want to push him into a corner. Without thinking much, I headed over to my grandfather's place. Once I was there, I told him what my father had said. For about a year now, I'd been trying not to worry about this, but somewhere deep down, I'd known that this day would come. I also had to worry about how I would pay for college because I was supposed to start in the fall, and that was just a couple of months away. Thinking about all of that just made me overwhelmed and so I started crying. That's when my grandfather told me that he'd had enough and he'd seen enough. So it was time to do what he should have done several years ago. I didn't understand what was going on, and neither did he tell me, but he went into another room to make a phone call. I tried to eavesdrop, but I could barely hear anything, so I gave up trying. After almost an hour and a half, my grandfather finally came out of that room and told me that I had nothing to worry about anymore. I could live with him now, and I wouldn't have to worry about college either. I tried to ask him what was going on, but he told me that it was none of my business right now, and he sounded really upset. So I didn't push it further. Then he told me to go enjoy my day with my friends like I planned to because my 18th birthday was not a day for me to sit at home and mope. Besides, now that things were all right, I had nothing to worry about, 
so I could go out and enjoy myself. After deciding to make the most of my day now that my problems seemed to be solved, I went out with my friends. I kept my phone on silent for the evening in case my dad called and had something to say. I didn't want to let him ruin my evening like he'd ruined the rest of my day. I didn't find out about his texts and calls until I got back to my grandfather's place, which wasn't until almost 10 in the night. I don't know what got into him, but it appeared to me that he had suddenly developed a conscience somehow and was begging me to come back. I didn't reply to him immediately but waited until the next morning to say that I won't be coming back. I didn't hold back and told him the reason that I wasn't coming back was because he'd never treated me well. And now that I finally had a chance to be happy, I wasn't going to give that up. Also, because Veronica was even worse than him, and I couldn't bear the thought of going back to living with him again. He controlled me for a long time, but now that I was an adult, I could choose where I wanted to live, and he had no right to tell me to come back, especially not after how he and his wife had kicked me out just the day before. After I sent those texts, I received one long text back from my father, and it was a pretty sad one too. He told me that he thought about things in private and came across an old photo album of me in his office, which just reminded him of all the promises that he'd made to my mother. It felt like he was letting her down right now by putting Veronica and the new baby over me. So he wanted me to give him one last chance and actually be a better father this time around because the news of the new pregnancy had just spooked him a little bit, which is why he'd done whatever Veronica asked of him without a second thought. But now he realized that he shouldn't have kicked me out and wanted me to come back desperately. I didn't reply to that text because I knew that he was trying to manipulate me. But I just didn't understand what he was going to gain from this, and I still don't get it. It's been a week, and he's been texting me every day, constantly reminding me of a couple of good times from my childhood and telling me how sorry he is for how he treated me. Initially, I thought that he was trying to manipulate me, but now I just don't know anymore. I tried to talk to my grandfather about it, but he just told me not to fall for his act and seemed very put off by his son's behavior. I feel kind of sorry for my dad, because now he's finally trying to be nice to me. But I don't want to go back anymore, and I feel like a jerk for some reason. The rational part of my brain knows that this is what's right for me, but a part of me just wants to go back and see what can be and if my dad will actually change or not. I don't know why, but he's trying to be a good father and make me come back even though he knows Veronica won't like it. But he's willing to put up with her outburst, too, just to get me back and I feel like I owe him a second chance. Yesterday, he texted me and said that he was willing to even beg on his knees for me to come back if that's what it was going to take. And I felt sorry, but I still didn't feel sure enough to reply. And it's making me feel guilty for not wanting to go back to my father's house even though he's begging me to return. Update 1. So, I've made up my mind. I'm not going back to my dad's house, and I don't think he meant any of what he said. I just discovered that the reason my dad's been begging me to come back has nothing to do with me but more to do with his lifestyle and maintaining it, if you catch my drift. I sat my grandfather down and told him all about how my dad was begging me to come back, and I still didn't want to go, and it was just making me feel like a horrible human being, and I was feeling very guilty about it. I tried to talk to him about this before, but he just told me not to fall for it and left it at that. This time. I felt like I needed to get all of this out of my system, even if he wasn't any help. After hearing me out, my grandfather got really serious and told me that he wasn't allowed to talk to me about this, but he felt like it was finally time that I knew. He then told me that ever since I was a kid, my dad didn't have to pay for anything to do with me, and that it was all my mother's family contributing and funding my upbringing. Now that I've been kicked out of my father's house, my grandfather had spoken to my mom's family and told them about how I was being treated, which is why they decided that I must now live with my grandfather. They were pretty pissed off at him as well for allowing this to go on for so many years and never saying a word about it. But now they insisted that I live with my grandfather, 
My dad didn't know about any of this and found out only a couple of days ago after he kicked me out. And my grandfather told him about this. My grandfather was the bridge between my mother's family and my dad and had been passing the money to him, which my mother's family would send. My dad always assumed that it was my grandfather funding everything, and my grandfather never corrected him because he knew that my dad didn't like my mother's side and wouldn't take money from them, which would, in turn, affect me because my dad was never willing to spend money on me. So he kept it a secret and pretended like he was giving my dad money to bring me up. My mother's family was pretty rich, so it was like huge amounts of money, which is probably why I went to a private school for so long because my dad would never have wanted to spend money like that on me. Unfortunately, after my dad married Veronica, he started keeping those funds from me and forced me to get a job just so I could afford even basic things like going out once in a while and buying clothes and shoes that I desperately needed because I'd outgrown the previous ones. I mean, I know it's not exactly like he was depriving me of food or anything, but it still felt pretty bad. My grandfather still didn't tell my mother's side anything because he was afraid of the consequences and didn't know what they would have to say about this, so he just kept it all quiet. But once I got kicked out, he realized that he had to speak up for my sake and finally told them the truth. I was mad at my grandfather for never telling me about any of this, but then he told me that he had no option but my mother's family wanted this to be a secret. Apparently, they didn't want me to know that they were the ones paying for everything because then I'd probably want to meet them. And they didn't want to meet me, not because they didn't like me, but only because they said that I looked too much like my mother and they couldn't bring themselves to do it. So it was more of an emotional reason than a practical one that stopped my grandfather from telling me anything. I was a little mad at him for never stepping up and telling them how my father and Veronica were treating me as well but he said that he was afraid that if he spoke up about it, my mother's family would intervene and have me taken away from them, and then he'd never get to see me again. It was an irrational fear, but he was still afraid of it. We talked things out, and I have to admit, I'm still trying to process a lot of it, but at least I know the truth now, and I'm definitely not going to fall for my dad's manipulation because he's only trying to get me back so my mother's family will continue sending him the money, and he can use it for his benefit. I knew that his new avatar was too good to be true anyway, so I'm not too upset about any of this. Update 2 So after learning the truth about why my father was so desperate to get me back, I blocked him. It's been a couple of days since then, and since he can't contact me, he started using Veronica's number to text me. Even she called me to let me know that I was being horrible to my father. I didn't have her number saved, so I accidentally answered the call. As soon as I heard her voice on the other end, I wanted to hang up, but curiosity got the better of me and I stayed. She pretended like she was crying and told me through mock sobs that my dad was really upset and she couldn't see him like this, especially in her condition, as if she had a disease or something. I told her that I wasn't interested in speaking to her, and she handed over the phone to my dad, who was about to say something. But I cut him off and said that he could drop his little act now because I knew the truth, and I wasn't going to fall for it. He said that he didn't know what I was talking about, so I told him that maybe my mother's family could explain better and then hung up and blocked Veronica's number as well. It was pretty satisfying to hand it back to them, and my grandfather thinks that I dealt with it well. In other news, I spoke to my grandfather, and I told him that I really wanted to meet my mother's family, even though I knew that they didn't want me to meet them because it was hard for them to see me. But I just had to see these people and thank them for everything that they did for me. It was a little difficult, but my grandfather finally managed to convince them to fly down here and meet me for the first time. I have seen pictures of my mother's family, her parents, and her older brother, but I guess meeting them is going to be very, very different. I don't know what to expect, and there's still a couple of days to go before I have to see them, but I'm excited, and I know that no matter what, they're going to love me, and even though this is my first time ever seeing them in person, I know that I'll love them too. Update 3. Hey, I'm back from my first meeting with my mother's family, and I'm happy to say that it went well. 
My grandfather was there with me every step of the way, and I'm glad for it because I was pretty nervous. My other grandparents were also lovely people, and my uncle was actually just the same person as I am, but just a lot older. All of us cried a little when we saw each other, which was pretty awkward for the other guests at the restaurant to see. But we didn't care. We were just so happy to meet each other. Once we got over the emotional part of the meeting, they started asking me about my life and interests, and I told them everything. They actually seemed to be interested and cared about me. They also told me that I didn't need to worry about my college funds because they had it all planned out but had forgotten to mention it to my grandfather. That was a huge relief as well. We had a great time overall, and we're going to meet a couple more times before they fly back home next week. They promised me that we're going to meet every month, and they'll either have me fly out to them, or they'll come to me. But we definitely will catch up every month, and I'm really happy about it.